We're back on Star Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, astrophysicist with the American Museum of Natural History here in New York City. And I'm with Eugene Merman. Eugene, you're in our Cosmic Queries part. Of yes, Star I Talk, am. And you're my question man. And I, I haven't seen any of these questions in advance. You just no. called them from the internet for us. Thanks yes, for that. Yes, you're very task. welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> so, what do you got I, for me? I'm using this. I'm an intern trying to get a PhD. Um, Here's a question uh, from Heidi. The existence of time, if not now, when? Dear Dr. Tyson, to me, question. Wait, that was the subject header <laughs> yeah, yeah. of the question? This question, actually, I don't think it's too long. Like, we'll run out of time before I read it. But I'm just, to me, questioning the existence of time intuitively makes sense, perhaps because I have a difficulty with tracking time or laying. This is too long. Anyway, the point is, I think the question is time? Okay. I think she's like, how does time work, and what is it? Why do, why do we use time? Is time something that's man made, or is it an actual? Yeah, thing? well, we use the vibe. Okay, let me let me handle that bit of it. Yeah. So our reckoning of time exists only because we have things that repeat mm -hmm. in some intervals. So ultimately, the things that repeat are vibrations in the of a transition of hyperfine transition in a cesium atom. Yes. Is what this comes in. You knew this, of course. I mean. <laughs> So point, point, point out a five-year-old who doesn't. I dare you. And so these are vibrations. They're, they repeat. Our The earliest time reckoning were, were empowered by astronomers. Mm -hmm. We kept track of uh, my, my, my cultural ancestors, yeah. kept track of, of the rotation of the Earth. So there was a day. There were sort of what a week would be, which were the quarter phases of the moon. You have... The month named after the moon. You have the time, the repeating cycle of the seasons. We call that a year. Everything. So the reckoning of time always involves something that repeats. So whether or not we're here to observe it, whether or not you feel like a long time has passed versus a short time psychologically, right. you can reckon time independent of your psychological state. And so uh, making it a observer, making time time is an observable quantity. Now time right. can vary according to. R relativity, right? And but that has nothing to do with your psychology, it's right? Nothing to do with your your physiology. It has to do with the, the physics of the universe. Where I can send you on a trip, and your time would tick more slowly right. than it would for me. And it's not just the mechanics of your watch; it's every biomechanical feature of your body. Right. Slows if down. I flew at light speed by a giant object like the sun, I would go back into I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so so we uh, Einstein is famously quoted as time is invented to make motion look simple. And so that was a clever sort of way to think about it, but I, I think and time travel stories make for fertile science fiction yes uh, uh, telling and uh, but other than that, I mean it's a, it's a term in an equation that allows you to lo localize something on a world line. And a world line is where you are in space and where you are in time. Uh, to think about it more deeply than just a coordinate, mm -hmm. I think, is unnecessary. You have never been at a place except for at a time, and you've never existed in a time except at a place. The two go together. You've never made an appointment with, I'll see you at three. So you don't think of me as someone who walks through time no, in any I direction I choose. <laughs> I don't. I see. Well, we, are, we are prisoners in the present, locked how, in eternal transition between our past and our future. How naive, Neil. <laughs> I exist in all time. Uh, yes, yes, Time Lord. Yes. All right, <laughs> All right here's question. another question. Here's 